Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Howard has the night off. Virginia Beach's Municipal Center was the site of the country's latest mass shooting today. Police confirmed 12 people died, plus the gunmen. Steve Rappaport has the latest. We heard gunshots. We kept hearing gunshots, and we kept hearing the cops saying, get out. Gunfire at the Virginia Beach Municipal Center. Police confirming the deaths of at least 11 people. This is the most devastating day in the history of Virginia Beach. Multiple other people are injured, among them a police officer who is expected to survive. Officials say he was fired upon by the suspect, but saved by his bulletproof vest. That shooter is a longtime employee of the Public Utilities Department and was killed by officers. The suspect entered Building 2 and he immediately began to indiscriminately fire upon all the victims. A courthouse employee says they heard shots in Building 2 before being told they were on lockdown, not long before many of them would have been walking out to start their weekend. We heard shooting, but we didn't think it was that close, that close, like in proximity of the building. If it had been 10 minutes more, we all would have been outside. My boss um, basically was like, this is not a drill, get down, call 911. And that's when we just I called 911 and we all just ran in her office and, and closed the door. Responders were seen bringing out other victims on stretchers. At least one person was loaded into a helicopter. Virginia's governor writes on Twitter, quote, This is a tragic day for Virginia Beach and our entire Commonwealth. My heart breaks for the victims of this devastating shooting. This is just a horrific day and uh, a lot of people are on the scene here and uh, just our, our thoughts are for these victims and their families. Steve Rappaport, Fox News. Here at home, an FBI expert on cell phone records took the stand today in the Kealoha trial and testified Gerard Puana may have been home when the Kealoha's mailbox was allegedly stolen. Manolo Morales joins us live from federal court. Manolo? Yeah, Bridget, the expert said that Puana received or got a phone or made a phone call several hours before as well as several hours after the theft. So the analysis indicated that he was either near his home or at home, but away from the Kealoa house. Now, FBI Special Agent Edwin Nam testified that according to Gerard Puana's cell phone records, he got or received a call around 2 p.m. on June 21st, 2013, and another one the next day around 8 a.m. He says based on those calls, the phone was in the Wilhelmina Rise area where he lived, but not in the area where the Kealohas lived in Kahala. Keep in mind that the alleged mailbox theft happened between those two phone calls, which was around 11.30 p.m. on June 21st. Nam also testified that he analyzed Puana's phone records in the Friday-Saturday period in the past three weeks before, as well as the week after, and he said there was the same pattern. The calls show Puana's phone was in the area where he lived, not near the Kealoha's. Under cross-examination, defense attorneys pointed out that there were several hours between those calls, which does not indicate where the phone was. Also, the phone records show who the phone was registered to, but not who's actually on the phone at the time. Now, Alexander Silvert, the attorney who represented Puana for the mailbox theft, also testified today. He testified that during the trial in 2014, he was surprised when Louis Kealoha was called in to testify. Silvert was expecting Catherine Kealoha and, uh, and to uh, identify Puana in the surveillance video, but instead, Louis testified and caused that mistrial. Silvert says he was planning to cross-examine Catherine if that trial had continued. Now, prosecutors have said that Louis K. Law caused the mistrial purposely because the cross-examination would have been damaging to Catherine. Silvert said he believed his cross-examination had information that, quote, would discredit her credibility. He also said there were many things about the case that made him suspicious. The video surveillance was already turned into HPD hours before the KLOs reported the mailbox stolen. He said he was also suspicious of how easily the mailbox was taken off its post. And when he made several attempts to get more footage from the security cameras, it was never provided. 
Now, also testifying today was somebody from the state who said that there's no records of an Allison Lee Wong working for the state. Allison Lee Wong, prosecutors say, was an alias that Catherine KLI used to forge documents. Also, prosecutors gave an update on the case. They said about they have about 20 more witnesses left, and they should be done presenting the case by next week, Friday. And after that, then the defense has their turn to present their witnesses. Bridget, over to you. Thank you, Manolo. An anonymous tip led police to a suspect arrest, arrested in connection with the murder of a man found in the woods in Kailua. That's according to court documents. Kione Labatad appeared in court this morning on kidnapping charges. The documents say a witness came forward to say they saw Labatad beating Benjamin Awong with a gun at a Kaneohe home on May 10th. The witness says Awong was bound at the time, then dragged into an awaiting vehicle. Awong's body was found in the woods off Old Kalani Anaole Highway on May 15th. Labatad is being held on $500,000 bail. To Maui now, where first responders were called to the pools of Oheo inside Haleakala National Park late yesterday after a man was injured jumping off a 45 foot high bridge into a pond. A search effort located the 44 year old man's body in the pools. The person's name has not been released. Honolulu police and crime stoppers warning the public about a man going door to door in the Hawaii Kai area pretending to be an employee of an alarm company. The man is telling residents he notices an alarm company subscriber sticker on their home and offers to check their system. Police say they have checked with alarm companies who say they do not do this type of door to door solicitation. They encourage people not to allow anyone into their home. In the event that they may get into the home, they may be casing out the place, they may ask you for the password to shut the alarm off. So just be very cautious of what type of information that you do give to these people. You can also check with your alarm company to verify the visit. And if you're still not sure, you can call 911 to have an officer sent to your home. Some city workers will likely be seeing higher paychecks. Mayor Kirk called well announced plans to raise the minimum wage for about 1,000 city workers in his State of the City address last night. Nikki Schoenfeld tells us what departments and jobs benefit. Nikki. Well, Mayor Caldwell said he was disappointed the state didn't pass a $15 minimum wage. <clears throat> Excuse me, and believes that workers should be making more due to Hawaii's high cost of living. Mayor Caldwell says about 10% of city workers make minimum wage, which is at $10.10. And the high cost of living here on this island and in this state is driving people away. The sad news is on the island of Oahu over the past couple of years, our population has actually shrunk. And that's why it's so important to give everyone the opportunity to make a living wage so they can live here. Mayor Caldwell said he was disappointed the minimum wage bill at the state legislature fell through. Because one job should be enough. Mayor Caldwell says the pay increase will initially cost the city $2.4 million, which has already been factored into the 2020 budget which the city council is set to approve next week. But basically what it does is just says that we value the work uh, of our entry level uh, positions and also we are sensitive to the cost of living here in Honolulu. Jobs that could see a bump include summer fun camp counselors, ushers and ticket takers at the Blaisdell and other clerical jobs. And that pay increase will go into effect on July 1st of this year. Bridget. Nikki, thank you. The weekend is here, and if you're wondering what the weather will be like, well, Justin Cruz would know. Jess? I'm liking what I see, Bridge. It looks very, very nice. High pressure and trade winds. Here are your trade winds this afternoon. Kahului checking in at 22 miles per hour, 17 for Honolulu. In the, uh, the teens elsewhere, with uh, slightly uh, weaker for Lanai City at 5, and Hilo checks in at 9 miles per hour. And those winds will offset the high temperatures. We're still getting 90s for parts of Maui County and upper. 80s elsewhere, mid to upper 80s elsewhere. So we are feeling the heat, but at least we do have those trade winds. Not a lot to talk about as far as shower activity. We are seeing a few light showers move into East Maui in the Hana area. And of course, you could see down here towards Hilo and the Puna district some windward showers moving through. But definitely no heavy rain. And 
really a nice evening to get out there and enjoy. If you plan on doing any kind of hikes tomorrow, the weather will cooperate. Again, no strong winds and no heavy rains, light windward showers at best through the upcoming weekend. It is looking good. Now, altogether, we'll see lots of sunshine plus continued windward Amalka shower activity tomorrow. And then, no major changes in the forecast through the upcoming week. Those trade winds are here, and they're here to stay to bring us some beautiful weather for the islands. Bridget, back to you. Thanks, Jess. And a reminder, hurricane season begins tomorrow and runs through November 30th. Last week, forecasters released their prediction for storm activity in the Central Pacific, five to eight cyclones. This includes the number of tropical depressions, tropical storms, and hurricanes that could either form or enter into our waters. The average is four to five. Now is the time to get your hurricane kit ready and stocked with all the necessary supplies in case a storm hits. You can find a list of items on our website, khon2.com. It's 510 now. Let's check early evening rush hour traffic on Oahu. We turn things over to Lady V. Unfortunately, well, first of all, thanks and aloha, Bridget and Howard. First of all, it's not bad traffic, but we do have, we have had a few accidents today, and unfortunately, a few still remain. An accident at Dukes and Kalakala, two moped riders involved. HPD is on the scene blocking the two left lanes at Dukes Lane. Accident on Macaulay Mackay at Kalakala, vehicle into a pole. Uh, nobody injured. Tow truck is on the way. And an accident on Mornalua Freeway westbound involving four cars near Pu'uloa Tripler exit. All vehicles have been moved to the right side. There's still debris on the road. Traffic slows approaching the gardens. H1 eastbound, Waikele exit on the right side of the off ramp. Two vehicles involved awaiting a tow truck there. Traffic heading out to the west side on the H1. We do see the brake lights near Arizona off ramp. On Mornalua Freeway, we see the back up, backed up to Halava merge with the relief not until after Waikele. Kelly into downtown Honolulu congestion beginning at Middle Street Merge and traffic from Castle Junction through uh, the Castle Medical Center on Kalani on Oli Highway in both directions. I'm Lady V at 92.3 KSSK Traffic Center. Bridget Howard, back to you. Thank you, Lady V. We'll continue to follow up on all of those updates. Well, coming up, an update on the historic flooding hitting parts of Arkansas. Plus, a heads up for those who shop at Costco. Why you may soon be paying. More at the register. Got a news tip? See something newsworthy? We want to hear from you. Report it at KHON2.com or through the KHON2 mobile app. This portion of the KHON2 news is sponsored by the Island of Hawaii Visitors Bureau. The coral is the oldest of our ancestors. There is a molecule that is not only found in coral tissue, it's found in the lungs and in the heart of the human. Science now has empowered me to speak of this idea of human environmental connection that I grew up with, that I just see as the truth. So did my ancestors. Listen to these real Haleakala customers. We went solar in 2015 because uh, we were really excited about the possibility of saving money on electricity. Our electric bills at that time were anywhere from $160 to $250 a month. We had fans going through the whole house, and this part of Maui where we live is extremely dusty. So the windows are open, the fans are blowing, and our electric bill is out of sight. The company locally takes a real interest, I think, in their people and their customers. And I thought that was something that really surprised me. And I was pleasantly surprised to find that the installers were here early. They did an excellent job, cleaned up afterwards. Now with Haleakala Solar, we have not had a bill that's exceeded the administrative charge of the electric company, which is $19 a month. And we run our air conditioning 24-7. My name is Cecilia Chang, and I'm a happy, happy customer of Haleakala Solar. My name is Jeff King, and I'm an extremely satisfied Haleakala Solar customer. Just call 808-745-1145. 808-745-1145. Come into a California Closet Showroom and be inspired. Collaborate with one of our expert designers. Together, you'll create the perfect space to fit your style and budget. Visit a showroom or schedule your free consultation today. All Family Care provides mosquito protection with a dry formula that's not oily or greasy so you can keep living life your way. Off. Live on. SC Johnson. Get the KHON2 News and Weather app and stay in the know on the go. 
The historic flooding in Arkansas is not showing signs of letting up as a levee was breached early this morning, sending the Arkansas River rushing into communities already underwater. The view from above shows a 40 foot section of the levee that was ripped open by the rapid currents. Now, water is inundating surrounding communities, and as the water levels continue to rise, so does the anxiety of residents. They are telling people that uh, that it is an emergency, that the levee has breached, and that everybody needs to evacuate. So Last night, President Trump approved Arkansas's request for a disaster declaration in 16 counties affected by flooding. Officials say they won't know the extent of damage until the water recedes, which could take days or even weeks. Costco has announced the U.S. trade war with China will lead to higher prices at its stores. The company says they're doing what they can to avoid the hikes, announcing they're looking at other countries to start sourcing products, including the U.S. President Trump levied tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. Some of the affected items include furniture, bikes, and luggage. Getting through airport security usually requires you to take off your shoes, empty your pockets, but that means passengers often forget something, spare change. The TSA says airport screeners collected more than $960,000 in unclaimed money last fiscal year. The agency uses it to pay for things like checkpoint maintenance and new signs. New York's JFK collected more loose change than any other airport, about $72,000. Honolulu's airport collected $12,552.80. Coming up, it's a one-of-a-kind ship docked at Honolulu Harbor, plus an unprecedented ending to this year's national spelling bee, how it all went down. And then there's our world famous on the attraction, the 2019 GLC. Lease the GLC 300 SUV for just $4.79 a month at your local Mercedes Benz dealer. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Before the Salvation Army, I was homeless. I was a meth addict. I was an alcoholic. I was hungry. But now, I have my life back. I have my sobriety. I have stability. The Salvation Army changed my life. And gave my family a future. When you support the Salvation Army, you're transforming lives right here in our islands. Please donate to help us meet the greatest needs throughout our community. Mahalo. 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 Living an active lifestyle has always been important to us. To be healthy and happy both inside and out. To keep looking and feeling our very best meant making smart choices. That's why we visited Dr. John Ferguson at the Ferguson Clinic. It's about confidence and greeting each day with your best self. Define your beauty at the Ferguson Clinic. Call 521-1999 today for a free consultation. We work hard to put a smile on your face. As a member of Aloha Pacific Federal Credit Union, you get surprisingly low rates on loans. So you can buy that car or house. Pay for major expenses or consolidate debt. We treat your money like we treat you with Aloha. And you get expert advice for a better financial future. When you have Aloha, anything is possible. Visit a branch or alohapacific.com. Join John and Tanya as the chefs from Hawaii's hottest restaurants bring their cuisine to you on Hawaii's Kitchen. Coming to you from Chef Zone every Thursday on Living 808. Here's something you don't want to see inside your home. An 11-foot-long alligator made its way into the kitchen of a Clearwater, Florida home overnight. It got in by smashing a window. The homeowner says the alligator broke several wine bottles. No one was hurt. The gator was safely removed.
A ship docked at Honolulu Harbor is drawing some curious onlookers. The vessel is actually named the BAP Union, and it's a training ship for the Peruvian Navy. This is their first time stopping in Honolulu. They say it's the best way for their future sailors to not only explore the ocean as they did in the past, but to see the world and be exposed to different cultures. Earlier on Wake Up Today, we asked Captain Kurt Botker what he thinks about Hawaii. The hospitality of Hawaii has been great. Wherever we go, we are uh, very well treated. I I, I think the royal treatment, whenever, wherever we go here in Hawaii, I think it's uh, that's why I, I value the most of our stay here. The ship is here until Sunday. If you would like a free tour of the BAP Union, stop by from 10 to 4. 8. That's how many spellers won the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Yes, that means it was an eight way tie for first place. It's the first time this has happened in the 94 year history of the competition. The Octo Champs were all smiles as they held up the winning trophy. So honored to be able to share the championship with seven other amazing spellers. This is amazing, and it's never happened before, which makes it even more special. I feel like there was no, no better way to do it. I would have been really sad if one person had missed in that round. I was really glad that all eight people won. All eight students won by spelling the final 47 words correctly, going through five consecutive perfect rounds. Each of the champions will get the full winner's prize of $50,000. Kids today much smarter than the generations past, I think. C-O-O-L. Cool. Very good. You advanced to the next round. Well, I tried. The weekend is here. Looking pretty nice. Yeah, actually very nice. Beach weather for sure, but how long will it last? We'll find out next on the KHON2 News at 5 as we look out west. Gorgeous conditions to start the weekend. 88 degrees, but feels like 90. At least we have those trades at 17 miles per hour.